Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Nice to see you again. Happy New Year. Today we're going to be talking about this tank. This is my discus display tank. This is the, the, the nice tank in the house. It's five foot by two foot by two foot. Custom built by OA Aquaria. Really happy with it. Looks great. But what I want to talk about today is how much it's costing to run. Something is amiss. Generally, when we talk about costs, it's heating, it's lighting, it's that sort of thing. Um, specifically, I've been trying to figure out how much my hobby is costing me. In total, if you don't know, I have a fish room with dozens of tanks downstairs in my garage. I've got this one here, I've got a couple upstairs. This one seems to be using an awful lot of power. So I've done all the standard things. I've got a lid on the aquarium, that makes a big difference. I'm making sure I'm using low power lighting. I can shorten the lighting cycle, the lighting period, where I've got the lights on. Still seems to be costing more than it should. So I'm monitoring this using Tapo smart plugs. These are things you can get them off Amazon, they're cheap as chips. I'll put a, a link down in the description. I think they're really useful. They work as smart plugs generally, so you can switch things on and off, but they also monitor the power consumption. So everything here is plugged into a board underneath the sump, which is then plugged into the wall, and then that's where I've got the the tapo, and I can monitor it all through an app on my phone. And what I've noticed is that my fish room, so half my fish room, which is mega tank, a whole rack of tanks, another couple of tanks on the side, is using half the energy that this tank is using. So this is generally using about 12 kilowatts a day, kilowatt hours a day, whereas the half the fish room that I'm talking about uses about six. No make sensey. If calculations are right, I think I pay about 34 pence per kilowatt hour. That means if that was to be consistent, this tank would be costing me about four pounds a day. That works out around 28 pounds a week, 122 pounds a month, or 1,468 pounds a year. And that's not good. It's not quite as bad as this, but obviously we're in the depth of winter, so if there is a time that a tank will be consuming more energy, it'll be now, because it, the difference between the ambient temperature and the temperature you're trying to hit will be so much bigger. In the summer months when it's warmer, the heater probably won't come on at all. So take that with a pinch of salt. Another factor which is probably worth considering is the location of this tank. It's in my hallway. This isn't a room we necessarily heat. If this was in the living room where we heat that a bit more, the heaters would be having to work a lot less to get up to temperature. The hallway's quite big, it's open, it goes upstairs, it's lots of air to heat, so it's not the most efficient space to try and keep hot. So there might be things that we do in the future about moving the tank, we might try and insulate the tank, but something's still not quite right. And one of the things that's been bugging me is the heaters on this tank. It took an awful lot of time to get this tank up to temperature. So for heating, I use two 500 watt heaters, which are in this dirty section of the sump, just here, plugged into a heating controller. So as you can see, the heating, uh, the heat is sitting at 28.4 degrees, 28.3, it's just changed. That's fine, that's kind of what I'm aiming at. During the winter months, I don't like to keep them at 30 degrees, I like to drop it down a little bit. But these heaters alone, we just, it just took forever to get there, so I ended up adding another couple of heaters, I think a couple of 200 watt heaters into that side of the sump, which got it up there. But four heaters, which are fairly large, to heat this tank, which is only, what is it, something like 700 litres or something like that with the sump, it's an awful lot. So that has made me think that there's just something wrong with those heaters. Heaters are notoriously rubbish. They fail all the time. Generally they fail in one of two ways. Um, one more catastrophic than the other. One, they stick on. So the thermostats that they've got internally, they bind, they stay on and they just keep heating and heating and heating, boiling all of your fish. Catastrophe. That's why I've got the heating controller to make sure that that can't happen. The other way is that they just die. They break. They don't come on and your temperature slowly drops. Not quite as catastrophic, no big deal. Replace your heaters and move on. I have started to read a few reports, no idea how confirmed or how prolific this is, of people saying, my heater is consuming the 500 watts constantly, but it's barely warming up at all. And there's a few theories of why that's happening, whether it's just bad connections, whether it's shorts, whether it's just some other internal failure of the heater where it's consuming all the power, but it's not converting that into heat. That could be what's going on here. I don't know how to test it properly. I'm not an electrician, so I've gone and bought a couple of new heaters. I'm going to take out the heaters in that tank and replace them with two new heaters. 
That's my love of all things Nycru products. <laughs> I've bought a couple of these. The thing that drew me to them is they are fairly standard, basic um, heaters. They've got displays on them. They've also got an external controller. All the basics and a little bit more, nothing that you don't need. So I'm going to try these out. These are the Nycru Plus Heat. Um, I think these are the 300 watt ones each. So I've got a couple of these. Again, lots of arguments on the internet about how many watts per litre you need to heat an aquarium. But in my experience, this should be fine. Um, I always go for two rather than ones, just so you've got a backup if one fails. We'll swap these over and we'll see if we can get any difference in the power consumption. No good YouTuber would have something new without doing an unboxing. So what do you get in the box? I will, of course, obviously put a link down in the description to these as well. UK plug, it's always nice. It's well packaged, not for coming out. So you've got a plug. This is the, the external control. This was one of the things that drew me to it. Um, basically meaning that you don't have to get your hands wet if you want to mess around with the temperature. So you can have this outside the tank, twist that around. Some instructions and then the heater itself, which isn't massive. This is another bugbear of mine that anything, when you get to like 300 watt heaters, they turn to like six foot long. Nope, it's just plain glass tube. Suckers, which by all reviews and reports are pretty good, but we'll see how we got on with them. So a small size, a decent length cable. I haven't measured it, but let's untie it. So I'm six foot tall, that's it on the ground. I'd say that's about nine feet worth of cable. So two of them, let's get them stuck in. So just looking on the app right now before I change anything, it's currently consuming 690 watts, which is an awful lot. So I'm going to unplug all the heaters, replace it with the two new Nycru heaters, give it 10 minutes and see what the difference is, if anything. So another good feature of these, if you can see that little light there, the LED changes colour, so it's orange if it's powering, as in heating, and then once it's at the temperature that it's set at, it goes green. So you always know it's on, or it's got power, and what it's doing. So now we've had that running in the tank for an hour or so, we can take a look in the app and see what the new heaters are consuming and whether it's made any difference. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so it's now showing 65 watts power consumption rather than 600 and odd watts. Wow, that is a big difference. So it just goes to show you how important it is to understand how much energy your aquarium is consuming because I wouldn't have known if I hadn't gone and looked at that. Everything is fine, everything is up to temperature, everything is working. Editor Graham here, I'm aware this looks like I'm now claiming that I've added two 200 watt heaters and they're only consuming 65 watts of power along with all the other equipment. That's not what I'm saying. Basically, the old heaters just seem to be on and consuming the power all the time, whether or not they needed it. Obviously, when the tank cools a little bit, those heaters will kick in and that energy will jump up. But it hasn't happened all day today. So, so far, so good. But I had no idea that was consuming 10 times more power than it needed to. So that's gone from £1,000 a year to £100 a year, which is mind-blowing. So I will leave a link to the devices that I've used, the Tapo smart plug and the Nycru heaters. But, you know, any new heater should do the same thing. That's made my new year a little bit better. Anyway, hope you found that helpful. If you did, give me a like, let me know in the comments. Join me on a Friday night, 9pm UK time in the live stream, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.